Hello and welcome back to the Darth Magog channel. I'm your host, the Dark Lord of the Apostates, Darth Magog. And this is Commander Fives, landed with the 1914th. And today we're going to be reviewing, you guessed it, more Caleb and Sophia cartoons. Let's get into it. We would be honored if you would join us. Okay, Commander, I'll queue up our first set of videos here, but before we do that, perhaps you should tell our XJW agents why you were selected from the 1914th. Sir, they know why. They know why, but for the new recruits joining us... For, for any younglings out there. For any new... Any cadets. Any cadets, yes. Well, I have my master's in early childhood education with a focus on trauma, and I've been working in the field with younglings for over a decade. Excellent. Well, that being said, you mentioned trauma. How about we start with a different episode today? I mean, I'm sure it's still gonna have trauma. It's always gonna have trauma. This one is called Lesson 36, Discipline is Love. It already sounds terrifying. I'm not sure what to make of the symbolism being pulled in two different directions. You'll find out. I'm sure I will. Oh, he's sad again. Constantly. He was sad last time I saw him. They're always sad. Caleb, why aren't you playing outside? Dad said I'm punished. Oh. Not sure why. I see. You know Dad loves you. Even when he disciplines you. Um. This could already go into some very dark arenas. Hey. Do you remember when we planted the fruit tree? Uh-huh. And we've selected Botany as our arena. See? Magic. She but does do magic. Roy, there. There's the magic. It fell over. What did Dad do? He helped it. Right. Did the straps hurt the tree? No, they helped it grow straight. Yes. Jehovah and Dad correct you sometimes too. Like the tree. Do you remember what the Bible says? This is my voice. Disciplines. We can't see your face, you have a helmet on. Jehovah disciplines the ones he loves. Unimportant. I missed the little tail end of the dialogue because I was talking about my voice. Unimportant. Oh. oh, Caleb. I love you, Dad. If discipline is love, you must love me a whole lot. <laughs> yes, Caleb. Yes, I do. No, I love you too, I notice. <laughs> Roy, that was a deeply fucked up video for all its briefness. Well, would you care for some, dare I ask, do you want the Jehovah's Witness context? Context. Pour the tea, sir. Okay, so Jehovah's Witness context behind this one, it's a bit of a twofold one, yes. Number one, Jehovah's Witnesses are a disciplinarian religion, so they do firmly believe in the Bible quote, spare the rod, spoil the child. Now that doesn't mandate beating your children, we'll get to that in a minute, but it doesn't mandate it. So what their goal is, they want to make sure that children are disciplined, have self-control, that sort of thing. Do you remember the kids in the back of the car, you know, the Kingdom Hall episode? Yeah. Yeah, where they compared it to the Flood? The Kingdom Hall episode where they compared it to the Flood. They were sitting in the back and they were a little worried about what was going to happen since discipline is a standard thing. More than a little worried, as I recall. That's because Jehovah is a big part of discipline. So you want to be sitting quietly, you want to be paying attention in that there are consequences for not doing that. Now back to, back to the spanking thing. Yes, it is allowed in Jehovah's Witness religion. It's up to the parent, it's what they call a conscience matter. So you are allowed to do that, and it's often the go-to discipline style. Now, it's not necessarily a feature in the literature. It comes up, though. Uh, they're fine with it. It's not denounced, and culturally, you know, if someone's being taken to the back, to the bathroom by mom or dad, they've got a spanking coming. Because they were playing during the meeting, or goofing around during the meeting, not paying attention, that sort of thing. So that's part of it. Here's where it gets sinister. It wasn't yet. 
Okay. Yeah, so here's the second level of it. So it doesn't just stop with your parents. This also applies. Remember when mom said, when dad and Jehovah discipline you? Yes, that was clear. Yes, that's because Jehovah has discipline for actions too. There's a, there's a term called disfellowshipping. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Very. Yeah, you're familiar. Well, for those of our agents that aren't familiar, disfellowshipping is when the elders in the congregation find out about what's called a serious sin, or wrongdoing, or what have you. Then they form what's called a judicial committee. So the elders take you to the back room, and then they decide. They decide on how you should be punished for what you've done. Let's say, for example, they caught you smoking. Smoking is a very big sin. It goes against the whole your body's a temple teaching. So the elders would take you back there and determine if you're appropriately sorry. If you are appropriately sorry, they'll let you stick around. They'll take your privileges so you won't be able to run microphones or comment at watchtower studies for a bit. So that's one thing. So they can, they can either reprove you privately, reprove you publicly, it just depends on the circumstances, or, if it's really bad, they can disfellowship you. What happens with disfellowshipping is you are no longer counted among Jehovah's Witnesses. You're not allowed to go to any Jehovah's Witness parties, other Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to- Well, you're shunned. You're shunned, yes. They pretend you don't exist, you're functionally dead to them, so they're not allowed to talk to you, that sort of thing. And that can include your family? That can include your family. There are exceptions to the rule. If you're a minor child when this happens, your parents are supposed to take care of you as far as they're legally obligated. So you only lose social and spiritual interaction with them. Which... We'll talk about that one another time. That's such a ripe situation for abuse. Indeed, ripe for abuse, and that's the big reason Norway really doesn't like it. They find it a violation of human rights, and that's why the Jehovah's Witnesses are struggling against the Norwegian government right now. So that's a big thing. So yeah, they have it as an option, it forces you to stay in the religion and comply, and they call it loving discipline from Jehovah. Because based on that, they figure the shunning and the social isolation, people will do anything to get right so they can have their family and Jehovah back, so they can have their community back. You also want to factor in that you're not allowed to have friends from the outside world. That makes this punishment more effective. You're also not allowed to go to college, so your job can be more dependent if you work with other Jehovah's Witnesses. They wouldn't work with you, so you might lose your job. You're a little more dependent, especially if you haven't gone to school. It's going to be harder for you to find a new career. Your housing situation may be dependent on other JWs. So if you're in that insular bubble, you're in big trouble. Right? It also ties back to that obedience factor. And I've read some horrific things about obedience and disobedience, even for something that seems absurd, that you can get into some trouble too. So... Also ripe for discipline at that point. I believe some quite famous XJW platformers have disfellowshipped over what seems to be very mild things. A lot of them have been. A lot of it is disagreeing with the doctrine or not believing it, not liking it, asking the wrong questions. I think smoking specifically. Yes, that was Telltale, Owen Morgan, and he was still pretty into it at that point. So, now that you have a little context around it, what do you think of this video from a childcare perspective? I find it interesting that we don't know what Caleb is being punished for. Really? Why is that? Is it relevant? Well, I'll get to that in a second. The second point I wanted to make really quick is that despite what you just said about spanking being the go-to form of discipline, the video makes it seem like all that happened is he gets sent to his room. Are we meant to assume he got a beating before that or he's gonna get another one after that? It's, it's not clear. In my personal experience, there's not a doctrine on this officially, but my personal experience, it's usually spanking, then room. Gotcha. Well, that's what I would have thought too. Now, I brought that up because we don't know what he's being punished for, because it clearly doesn't matter to the Watchtower whether or not the punishment fits the crime. So it's clearly advocating for the same type of punishment across the board, no matter how big or small the infraction. Right, because this is an instructional video, really. It's instructional for younglings and parents, so that tracks. And then, your whole context lecture just can basically be distilled down into controlling behavior through fear. I'm just going to talk about, real quick, how toxic and ripe for mistreatment and abuse it is to conflate love with discipline. Because you can take, and people do, witnesses and non-witnesses can take any form of punishment and take it to egregious levels and slap a discipline label on it, try and make it seem okay through that. So you teach a child that any amount of mistreatment is for their own good, and what do you get? 
you get a child who grows into a teen, who grows into an adult, who doesn't know how to expect respect or for somebody's reactions to them to be reasonable. And a word on spanking too, I need to review the studies on this, I can't quote them from memory, but there is not any kind of repeatable evidence that shows that spanking is okay. It does not work, it's not a good thing to do. I personally and professionally am heavily against spanking. That said, it has a lot of proponents, including people who were spanked as children. And I would include it as a form of abuse. Even trainings I do now for my work, I have abuse and neglect trainings, and they go out of their way to make the distinction that when they discuss corporal punishment as abuse, they're talking about hitting a child with a closed fist or hitting with an object like a belt. And yes, I'm not arguing that's abuse. What I take issue with is saying that hitting a child with the flat of your hand is not abuse. I absolutely disagree. That is still abuse. Now, I know some anecdotal stories from people who uh, will say they were spanked and didn't leave, a, didn't give them a lasting harm. But dig a little deeper and it turns out maybe they were spanked once or twice because they ran into a street and had to be yanked back and the parent reflexively hit them out of fear for what they were going to be hit by a car. Not chronic repetitive spanking that's dealt out in all manner of infractions or sometimes no infraction and can be done for as little reason as the parent is annoyed and has no tolerance for normal kid behavior. That was a long way to say spanking is harmful, don't do it. Okay, so Fives, I didn't notice you mentioned something. I'm going to put a trigger warning here. I'll put a timestamp to skip ahead. I'm sure you're aware of the case. I think it's up to nine defendants in the JW congregation attached to it that are implicated in many cases of CSA. I believe it's over 19 victims that they have who were children at the time. Now there's... There's a bit of a problem with it. They determine willing participants and consider that part of discipline. So technically for being a victim of CSA, you can be disciplined in the congregation for that. There are cases of it. I've been reading some cases. This is an older one not attached to the PA case. It was a UK case where a man and his wife administered a test to see if their victim could stay away from CSA. And the punishment was more CSA from the man. And it's a very bizarre thing, huge problem in the org, so I can see how that gets more egregious. Is that what you're thinking of with the whole discipline being love thing getting conflated? Uh, yeah, admittedly my brain hadn't gone that far, but it would still, that would count. And you said that was done as a punishment for failing tests? Correct, for failing a test against, I have to word this very carefully on this platform, the couple was okay. testing the victim to see if the victim could keep away from CSA. And I guess they couldn't break the tester's attack, so the tester continued doing actual CSA. Yeah, okay, no. Ugh, blows my mind. That's a no. And they call us evil apostates. So yeah, to, to answer your question, yes, that qualifies as egregious form of, I can't even call that punishment. Yep, straight abuse. I don't want to linger on this. We have more video. I think we should do a separate special on that. Agreed. I'll hold on to what I was going to say on that. To shift gears really quickly, let's do something lighter and softer. Yes, please. This is a problematic one, but it'll be lighter and softer. Let's get over to this in 19. Be generous. Alright, so we're back at the Kingdom Hall, and here's Sophia. She's after... she likes ice cream, so pretty straightforward. Yeah. Reminds me of you, Commander. Uh, indeed. She's got a coin there, she's being handed a nice double scoop. It's really bouncy for some reason. So she's got that, she's got a coin for that. And then here's Mom, she's dropping in a little money into the donation box. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Yes, and she's going to get into her imagination and the building some kingdom halls, the building kingdom halls, and they've got books on the witness cards, and they're printing more Bibles. Not sure what the cows are for. <laughs> I guess because it's upstate New York. Alright. Alright, so she's... I thought it was more of a Wisconsin thing. Yeah, she's taken a coin, she's dropped it in the donation box, and now she's very pleased with herself and she's wandered off. Yeah, I think I get what the point was. Well, let me give you a little JW context on it. <laughs> As you were. Because this is the format of these videos, come on. Yes, sir. Okay, JW context on this one. So, I believe someone in the comments section asked us about tithing. They may have been an ex-Mormon. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so they're wondering about how tithing works. 
There's no tithing actually in Jehovah's Witnesses. We learn about it. If you don't know what tithing is, it's a, it's a form of collection where you're supposed to give your top 10% of your earnings to God. So if you get a $2,000 paycheck, you need to donate 200 to the church, right? Now, officially speaking, donations are voluntary and you donate within your means with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Everyone is expected to donate within their means. That's an expectation. And everything is... From an official standpoint, run from there. So your Kingdom Hall's electric bill is paid on the back of your donations. The rent for the facility... Well, actually, I should probably qualify this. It was like this. Now, the society pays for everything. It used to be you'd have a local donation box and a worldwide donation box. They changed that some years back when the society took over all the Kingdom Halls and they own all of them now. It's a whole thing and I need a video dedicated to it, but the short story is, there's one donation box and it goes to the worldwide work. So yes, it pays for the Kingdom Hall, but it also pays for Kingdom Hall construction, so it buys the raw materials, although they're constructed with a servant labor force, volunteer labor force, hint hint nudge nudge, so that's how it works. It also pays for the printing presses, the facilities, the light bills, so the donations all go to that officially. It's technically supposed to go to any congregation and organizational expenses, so if there's something that they need to pay for, a service like a plumber or an electrician or a lawyer, your donations will go to that. Why would they need a lawyer? Why would they need a lawyer? Why indeed? We don't know. Now that you have some JW context behind that, how do you feel about this video about donation? This video is not about donations, a tithing, and money. It's about guilt. Oh, well, okay. So we've got fear and we have guilt. We're about two in the fog right now. Just need that out. So you know how this presented as a binary? She can get the ice cream or she can give her money to God? Unless, and this does happen, I'm not devaluing this experience, but unless you are really strapped for cash, you can afford both. You can afford to give your top 10% and give your daughter the occasional Canetto from an ice cream truck. They're not mutually exclusive, and to imply they are across the board is ridiculous. And you notice it was mom giving away the money too, so her parents have already paid. She's pretty much set. Yeah, that too. So then what's the point of presenting it as if they're mutually exclusive? It's because they don't want her to think about her own wants. They want her to think about God foremost and only. And the governing body has been reminding people about their donations. They don't beg for money. In fact, the founder said, when we start having to beg for money, then God doesn't want us to do the work anymore. He said it himself, and the governing body's been not begging for money, but saying, your donations help. So what is this propaganda doing other than planting seeds of guilt for having self-indulgent fantasies? As simple as wanting an ice cream cone. Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about the self-indulgence. Jehovah forbid you want an ice cream as a child, as a nine-year-old girl or whatever. Or as an adult, thank you very much. Yes, Commander, there's plenty in the commissary. Oh good, is that the freezer? It, yes, it's the freezer. The Commander's new. Apparently, the commander hadn't fought through the whole clone war. Shh, that was the other commander. You're the same guy. Anyway, that's what I have to say about that video. Alright, well that being said, commander, we're two for two now. You want to see about some obligation? Yes. Okay, here we go. Well, no, but yes. Well, too bad, because I have a third episode requested by your agents, commander. Lesson number 34, Making Sacrifices. Well, you weren't lying about the obligation. Oh, I missed my cue. It's white Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> nice comments today, both of you. So, Mom. Love the music. Go to the park? Hmm. A little recreation. So. Oh, okay. We just have to wait a bit for Dad, then see what he says. Here comes Cause Dad. Dad's the head of the family. Oh, it looks like somebody needs a ride. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I hope this doesn't spoil your plans. What a beautiful afternoon. <clears throat> All right. We're going to take Wilfredo home and help him with a few things, okay? And there goes Caleb's basketball. I'll get the tools. Probably the thickest his accent has ever been. Whatever the accent is. Something Jesus made all the time. 
make something? What? A sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus worked hard. And sometimes he had plans to rest. No, he didn't. He's a demigod. Hey, Fives, look. It's your boy. I can't even respond. But when people needed his help... You gotta put in the real favorite white Jesus on screen one of these dice. Giving up what he wanted to do. To help someone else. Right. Look how happily they're dusting and sweeping. Bang the vacuuming after sweeping. Few things, I. Can feel happy, even if he didn't get to go to the park. He didn't get to go to the park, by the way. Clearly. All right, bring on your context. Context, you want the context now, Commander? Okay, so JW, context on this one. <sighs> you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not very much. Needless to say, Dad got the final decision because he's the head of the household. Jehovah's Witnesses believe in headship. I believe we discussed that in a number of videos on this channel, so I won't be beating a dead tauntaun. But he gets to decide what to do if we get to go to the park or do something else. Now what this was, this was an example of Jehovah's Witness charity. So Jehovah's Witnesses do do charitable acts for themselves. Wilfred is an older member of the congregation, and it's a tradition to help older members who have trouble. Often you have to keep in mind a lot of them don't have very good retirement. Some of them end up being single, decided not to get married or have kids, sometimes at the strong recommendation of the society. A lot of them don't have a college education, and they end up, they usually don't have a lot of money, tend to be infirmed when they become elderly, it's just kind of a thing. In fact, I think only about 10% of the religion is millennial age to younger, 10-20% to is millennial Gen Z or younger. Everyone else is at least Gen X. So yeah, there are more older members in the congregation. It's fine to give some help, it's a good thing. But what they want to do, this is another way to say that spiritual things like being charitable and taking care of your brothers and sisters as Jesus would have commanded you to do, it's always going to be more important than your recreation. It's about how you spend your time. They want you doing spiritual things, associating with the right people and doing the right things like studying and field service. They use the example of Jesus who always wanted to, oh actually there's one scripture where he wanted to go, not even take a nap, but go pray. And he had the disciples up for a while, so he ordered them to stand guard while he prayed and they fell asleep. So he came back, woke him up, gave him a talking to, went to go pray again. So they tried to stand watch and fell asleep again. And I'm wondering, how many times do you need to go pray? Why are these prayers so long? You kidding? That's the context behind it. Dad makes the calls, charity is good, helping your elders is good, and spiritual things over anything else. More important than rest and recreation. This is them leaving the Kingdom Hall for more context. They'd already gone to Sunday meeting and they were finished. And they were going to have a day at the park. So that being said, Commander, lock and load. I know you got that DC-17. Trying to figure out which target to blast first. This is one of those videos where, at first glance, might not seem to be that bad. And if you don't know any better, you might make that mistake. Now, there are things in there that should be a red flag for anybody. The whole patriarchal notion of the dad being the head of the household and his word goes. I mean, it's there's problems in this too. But it's one thing to tell your kids, your younglings, what you're doing next in the die. It's an entirely other thing to tell your wife. What was that look for, Commander? The Commander isn't your wife, Lord Magog. I'm aware, Commander. Anyway, as the other adult in any fair and balanced household, she ought to get a say. And she clearly does not. And she even gave up a say, or however you want to describe it. She told the Padawans they need to wait for Dad is what I'm getting at. I could parody myself from the last video and say it's not about charitable acts. This is about obligation. There's our O. There's our O. Woo! We got all three of them. And it's not quite as black and white as the ice cream one, because some things in the video are true. You know, sometimes living an ethical life does, or a community-minded life, does mean you do something for somebody else that you may not feel like doing. 
You'd rather be doing something else, but it takes priority. But we know that the kid's point of view never, ever, ever gets to come into play. So it's not just you need to look out for the elderly, or, you know, do things that are not for yourself sometimes. It's all the time. So there's no balance, there's no moderation. You're gonna run into problems. You're gonna run into problems if you're a child. You're gonna run into problems with that if you're an adult. So there are some things in this video that I'll get to. I mean, we should be teaching cadets how to care for the elderly. We should be teaching community values. And any living of an ethical life requires sometimes that you do things that you may not feel like doing. Or something for somebody at the expense of something you wanted to do yourself. I'm not arguing with it, any of that. What I'm arguing with is that it has to be the focus all the time. Everywhere, every situation, every age group. Because I don't care how old you are, you need balance. And the fact of the matter is, the children have just finished Sunday worship. Sunday worship, so yeah, they've been in there at least an hour and a half. So they've been doing the spiritual work already. I think the kids earned some time at the park. And if old man Wilfred needed to go home, why didn't they just invite Wilfred to the park? And then take him home. Um, um, that would have been logical. That's a logical question, Fives. Get off the bridge. Anyway, even if that wasn't an option, it'd be so easy to organize the day where they could do both. If they couldn't take Wilford to the park, Dad could have taken Wilford home, dropped off the family at the park, and Dad could have helped Wilford out, let the kids play. Again, it doesn't have to be one or the other, and the video is making it out to be one or the other because of the agenda. Well, he couldn't have just dropped off the family because the younglings are required for sweeping and dusting. You know, who else could get in the kitchen but Mom? He can't do that. He's busy fixing the fan with his muscles. Yes, because work in the kitchen doesn't require muscles at all. By the way, neither does sweeping or dusting. So yeah. It's again passing on the message that anything one wants to do for oneself is at best unimportant and at worst bad because it infringes on spiritual matters. Also, sorry but not sorry, the org doesn't give a shit about the elderly. That is confirmed. I have a personal experience with that. Because my, as you know, I have a family member who was serving in the congregation and has since lost the use of his legs and had to back out because he wasn't able to keep up with his responsibilities in his health. He thought it was the right thing to do to step down and let someone else lead. And since then, they have not been very involved. And another family member of mine who's been taking care of him, luckily he does have family to take care of him, all the members of that side of the family are not pleased with the congregation, since the Kong forgot about him, and that's because you can't count time for helping a baptized one. And yeah, don't make literal children responsible for your failings as an organization, as a religion, and as a community. Right, there are no shelters, there are no nursing homes sponsored by the organization for Jehovah's Witnesses. Even if you've been at Bethel forever, they can say, you're done, you have to go back to your home congregation. Even if you have no family members or no close friends to help, then the only recourse you have is basically Satan's system. To get, to get that relief, there's even an elder's letter going around that has a list of non-Jehovah's Witness charities that Jehovah's Witnesses can go to to maybe get some relief. So even though we're allegedly a charitable organization at the Watchtower, it doesn't go to any of the members, unless it's on another member's dime. Make of that what you will. I have made of that what I will. Okay, Commander, any final thoughts now that we've seen three episodes? Yes, Magog. I'm a little mad at you. It wasn't me this time. I'm a little mad at you because if I know there'd be an opportunity to talk about spanking and how it's not okay, I would have been much better prepped. I think you'll probably have plenty to do in post. Plenty of things in post we can put up. We'll do our best to make up for your mistakes. It's supposed to be a blind reaction, Commander Fives. Well, I have shite to say, Lord Magog. I'm aware, Commander. That's why you're here. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think we've got it all. Well, thank you again, Commander. You're an excellent first officer. Call the recruits for cleanup. So, XJW agents, what do you think? We'd love to hear your opinions about Caleb and Sophia in the comments down below. 
Also, if you have any other Caleb and Sophia videos you'd like us to review, we'll accept those in the comment section too. Remember, XJW agents, the elders may be watching you, but, but Darth Magog is watching the Watchtower. Thank you.